Chasing the Rainbows with your host, Bernice Quisenberry. Today's segment of Shooting All Over Ourselves is with Brie MB. Thanks so much, Brie, for coming of back. Of course. Today. Thanks yeah. for having me. Great. Um, just to recap, we are going to go real quick through our lived experiences, not like we're minimizing them, but just to give you, you know, to qualify ourselves as baby loss survivors. Um, I, Bernice, went through, um, my husband and I went through secondary infertility, acute PCOS, uterine fibroids, miscarriage, and our five-year-and-a-half-week-old daughter, Brooke, died in my arms. Yeah, um, and, and Brie here, we, yeah. uh, we also had uterine fibroids, secondary infertility, we had two stillbirths and four miscarriages. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Thanks, Bree, for sharing sure. that. Um, yeah. So just to kind of put in perspective for our listeners out there, um, you know, this segment today is really about all those feelings of guilt around our losses. Mm. So that's why we wanted to give a quick synopsis for anyone who missed our first episode. But, man, that guilt. Yeah. Oh. It's for real. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Even I'm years later, jumping. I still struggle with the guilt of it, you know, of everything. There's a lot. That's Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes. It's like an onion, like just guilt itself and peeling back those layers. Yes. And um, I think the hardest thing, too, is when we're returning to society after our losses because we're already still processing everything. It was a whirlwind. And yep. then to still feel like that. Yep. Absolutely. No, I know. I mean, And just like you're, you have this internal guilt, too. And, and I think the beauty of us being here today and sharing this is guilt is normal. Like, right. you know, after you lose a baby, you have these feelings of guilt and being able to talk about that because right. we internalize that Absolutely. and because we don't want to burden anybody else. And we fear nobody's going to understand, which, you know, unless you've gone through it, it is hard to understand. But I think um, us talking about that specific feeling, like there's so many emotions that go along with losing a baby, but the feeling specifically of guilt is something that, I mean, I would, yeah. I would say almost every single person who has lost a baby deals Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. And I think something, too, that, you know, we don't really talk about it and things that weren't discussed. But, you know, you and I have talked about this before that we were raised, you know, our we're generationally different than our parents and we were raised where you know you kept the problems that you had mm -hmm. within your family yep. and that you guys handled them together kind of like the old sweep it under the rug mm -hmm. kind of thing but you know you move on like these tough things happen in life but you like put your like two feet you know your yep. shoes on your yep. big girl pants on yep, and, like, yep. you know keep moving big girl panties on and move forward <laughs> yeah. one step in front of the other yeah right. you don't talk about it right and so when we were going through and experiencing all these things I felt like so much guilt because like I I should be able to get pregnant. I should be able to carry to full term. I should be able to, mm -hmm. you know, give birth to a healthy baby. I should be able to raise my child and me pass away before my babies do. Yep. And because that is how life is supposed to go, right? But when that doesn't happen in these shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and we're beating ourselves up about them, yep. um, it's like, it's good knowing that I have other survivors around me who understand what I'm going through. Yep, and I think one of the big things for me is, I got pregnant with my oldest with no problem. I mean, uh, first month of trying, we got right. pregnant. All right. So then, seems like a dream. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And then, like, you enter secondary infertility, and all of a sudden, you're like, well, why am I not getting pregnant? Shouldn't I be able to get pregnant? I got pregnant right away so and statistically yes. you know if you have one healthy pregnancy you go on and they say that you know you should be able to yep. continue on that and when that doesn't happen you feel this like oh my gosh I'm out there on the island alone yep. all of a sudden and then that guilt all comes and was trolling. my body failing me is like yes. what did I do you know the, yes. the guilt what did of I do like yes. back in the day like you blame yourself of this? yes yep and that's like a whole, and we can get into that too with, you know, the blame that we place on ourselves, that guilt we place on ourselves for, did I do something wrong? Should I have done something different? Right. You know, right. um, I feel like there's, there's just so much around guilt that uh, we Ugh. struggle with as baby loss survivors because it's just, you know, and nobody, and like, like we said, nobody's talking about it because it's, it's not a comfortable topic to talk about. And, um, right. 
you know, but it needs to be talked about because it's normal. And I think I went through this whole guilty period, too, of after we lost Brooke, I thought, oh, my gosh, how did I ever handle people losing babies before this? Or how did I handle mm -hmm. someone who went through a miscarriage or someone that was dealing with fertility challenges before Brooke? And I sit there and I was like, was I ever insensitive? You know, then you beat yourself up like I could have done more. Honestly, I think about it. and It's like I just pray, you know, or, or think. You know, hopefully I didn't say anything offensive or, or yeah. do any of those things and wasn't just like there to listen to yeah. the people. So you feel guilty about that, too. <laughs> right. Of course. Just like tack that on to everything else. Um, and it, I think it is. I think yeah. it's about like, um, you know, yep, yeah, it's going right there. But then it's also like the guilt around. Um, am I doing enough for my husband? Am I doing mm. enough for if you have other children? Yeah. Am I doing enough um, as an employee in my workplace, you know, while I'm grieving and, and things like that? And it's well, you're trying to find a balance because you, yes. you know, especially if you have living children, you want to be there. You want to be a great mom and you want to be with, there for them and your husband and, you know, or, or your spouse. You want to be there for them and you want to um, do what you can for them because they're they're hurting, too. And but then you're also trying to just survive each day exactly. because that's what it feels like survival mode yeah and and it's like you put this guilt on yourself you know you should be doing this for your employer and you should be doing that but you it's hard enough just to crawl right. out of bed in the morning absolutely you know so there's just this overwhelming guilt that you um in that sense that really it, it, there's nothing you can do because you're just trying to survive yes and I think the most important thing for me was that is I actually had to process the guilt because I you know in the grieving bereavement world they coin these two as being a female and a male griever and the male grievers you know like to move on and and, and any um, person as they as they identify as can be either kind of grieving. It doesn't mean like only males can be male grievers. Oh right, yeah, yeah, female grievers. yeah. But um, the male griever, how I take it is right, is like they like to move on. They you know they process it in that way, and they you know do a really good job with that. And then me, um, I'm a female griever where I do need to sit with it. I need mm -hmm. to process it. I need to completely like just keep beating that rug until I feel like I got some answers that yeah. I needed. I feel like I'm a little bit of both. Right. I think it's a, I, so I'll, so my, um, four early miscarriages, I think I was more of a male griever, Right. you know? Okay. Um, but then my two stillbirths, I was more of a female griever okay. where I, cause there was a lot of guilt associated with those pregnancies that I wondered if I did something wrong. Yeah. So I feel like I needed longer to process, process that. Um, and that took time. Oh, to yeah. walk through that and, yeah. and to really like sit with that and, and, you know, think about that. And, um, that, that was, that was challenging because it's like, you know, I, I felt guilty. I felt like I could have, should have, should have, should have, yeah. should have yes. <laughs> done this, done that. Yes. And, um, yeah, the guilt surrounding that was, it took time to work through. Right. And I, oh my goodness. Yeah. Right. It, it is all around the events yep. and just what happened because, you know, we do want to blame ourselves or it, like, we go back to that should have, would have, could have. Yep. Um, but yeah, and I think too, uh, when we are going through these guilty feelings and we're out in public or we're with friends or family, because we don't know when it's coming on. Yeah. Like this onset of these feelings just like hit us. And I, I remember the intensity of it being in the first, like, and still in it um, in these first couple years. And, you know, when that does, that wave of guilt hits you. I wanted to be able to talk to people about it openly mm. and them just sit and listen, right? Just sit with yeah. me or embrace me and say, you know what? This is completely valid. Your feelings are hurt. Like, yeah. I get it. You like, don't need advice necessarily. Right. You just want to be validated. Yes, I don't want advice or I don't want to be like the wounded bird, yeah, you know, right. in the office. Like, I, I want to feel normal because these are normal feelings. These are normal things that we're going through when we're processing these huge catastrophic losses that we've been through. Yep. So. So this is all normal and processing. But don't you agree? Like, how do you feel like when people embrace you when you're feeling these things of guilt yeah. and you just want to blurt it out and get it off your chest because you're angry at yourself? I think I was um, I think that's probably why a lot of us clam up yes. and we don't talk about it right. um, because we one, I didn't want to have the guilt of burdening, burdening somebody oh, else I I just with my problems. Yep. And, and like you said, I, you don't want to be the wounded bird. Right. right. So like. Everyone felt bad for me. I sensed it. I knew it. You know, the way they look at you and you're I like, know. the last thing I want to do is talk about it, right. how I was actually feeling, because it's just amplifying those, that wounded bird, right? right. So like, right. I, I don't know. I, I, I definitely, it took me a while, but I think I did eventually reach out to people who had similar experiences. Agreed. Because, and I don't know why I waited so long because it really helped me. Right. Because those people knew how to respond to me. Yes. Because it was simply a 
he, your your feelings are legit. Yes. I felt that yes. too. It's okay. Yes. You're going to be okay. Yes. You know, and that's what I needed. Right. I didn't need senseless advice from somebody who didn't understand. All coming from good places. Like, right. I, I definitely. They don't want to see you cry. They don't want to no. see you upset. They don't want you beating yourself up because they care about you. Right. It's all from a good place. And I didn't However. want to make them feel yes. bad yes. for not knowing how to respond, right? right. So, and but, as you're crying, like they feel bad because yes. they feel like they made you. Yes. Cry, they didn't make you. It's a, and then you feel guilty response. about it, <laughs> right? Then it's like all over again. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a it's a cycle. But I, I definitely I wish I would have reached out to survivors sooner but I didn't know who those people well, were exactly and you weren't in a place no offense after any of you know we've gone through whatever we've got you know and different losses and things like that we, we were not at any mental space to be able to find people yeah. when and that's you know what we're trying to do here this yeah. is why we have which this I think thing. is um you know one of my missions in life now is if I find out somebody has lost a baby I make it a point to reach out to them exactly. because I know they're not going to have the strength to reach out to me. And I think that's exactly what you did to me. Yeah. Just coming alongside people and right. just put yep. your arm around them yep. and say, I've been there. I know what you're going through. Yep. Um, but it, it goes a long way. And and I encourage anybody who has gone through losses, like be that person for somebody else. Cause that's what we, I really needed in that yes. moment. And it's, it's funny, not funny, but it's crazy how, you know, once you start opening up and sharing, how many people are like, oh, I went through that too. Exactly. And, and I'm like, where were you? Right. Months, weeks ago, you know, whatever. I could have used I know. that advice. And, you know, it's, know. it's hard, but it's just hard to then talk about. Then you go back about. for guilt because you're like, guilt. oh my goodness, here we go. Yep. Like guilt, guilt, guilt of not reaching out sooner or guilt of not knowing their own journeys. Yeah. Because then it's like, well, I'm sorry I wasn't there for you during your journey. Yeah. But like how would you have been because you, you didn't know. You didn't know. Yeah. And that's a lot of times it's I not know. intentional. A lot of times it's just you just don't know. Exactly. People don't know. Exactly. Um, which... Well, because of the suffering and silence, like yep. the, the way that it was. And, and still, you know, we're trying to break and tap into this whole concept of like, let's get it out there. Let's talk it and through. And that's why we're here. Right. We're here to talk about it. And you know, share our lived experiences and, you know, just let people know that there are a lot of other people out there who have gone through this and don't feel, um, you know, don't feel ashamed talking about it because it's it's important to talk That's about. That's exactly it. right. And you know, thinking about others too, like during this time, was so extremely hard. And mm. that and that guilt, right? Like of reaching out to others that have been on this journey or dealing with relationships and other people, yeah. you know, outside of what's going on, but they are in your inner circle. Yeah. And navigating those, you know, relationships, which we're going to have a whole segment on that. But it's, um, you know, people that wanted to help and contribute to. Um, like Brooke's service or meals or doing things for us. Mm -hmm. And I, at the time, didn't know how to even say thank you. Yeah. I didn't know how to accept it. Mm. Um, and then those feelings of guilt would come in. Like, I didn't thank them for my gratitude with what they've done. Yep. Um, I'm bad at receiving. Yes. I'm a giver. I'm yes. terrible. I just, I don't know. I I feel guilt. It's like, I've yes. always struggled. I feel guilty for receiving. And, and But you got to remember that people want to help. I know. And it, you don't know, deprive them of that. Exactly. Because you're robbing them of that opportunity. Um, and, yeah, and something great that my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, just real quick, you know, they were mentioning too, I was like, you know, people in the world have it a lot worse than I do right now. Yeah. And and that's what I said to them, and they go, and they look at me, and they go, honestly, we can't sit here and say that that's accurate, because mm. I can't imagine anything worse. Yeah. Or, you know, something that's on the same level. And then it put it in perspective for me, like, okay, wow, I guess this is... Like I am valid yeah. with how I'm feeling. And that yeah. was the first time that I started to feel that validation with mm. someone like, okay, my feelings, this is normal. Like, okay, great. Because yeah. I didn't see anyone around me or anyone else that's been Well, you were this. feeling guilty for feeling that way. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you just need someone to come up to you and say, that's okay. That's normal. Right. You're, this is terrible. Right. Like, don't, we're not going to make this sound like a great. Because I'm comparing myself. And honestly, sure. during that time, I was like, you know, there's people out there that are homeless. There's people out there. And it's just going yep. down that rabbit hole. Because like, why do I feel this? But that's why it's guilt yep. and talking about it then like really helped me to process it right Good. and to be able to finally feel like I was heard and seen was huge yeah absolutely no yeah. I love that that's that's so important I think yeah but what about like the pressures and the guilt too, like on us returning to society? Because I feel like we're under mm. a microscope now, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody knows about our law. If if you know you oh, yes. shared it and, yep. and you know whatever, but now. I know it's probably what I'm putting on myself and I'm not, you know, under a microscope, but 
feel like that. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. And, right. So, like, when you didn't you shower, got, like, a you spotlight on yourself. <laughs> yes. And, and, that's, and that's the hard part, I think. Uh, um, I think that's why it's hard to crawl out of bed. And I, I think, I mean, it's part of the reason. I think it's hard to go back out in, to work. Um, I remember returning to work after we lost Landon. Um, and he was our first stillbirth. It was hard to return to work because the moment I walked in, I got the the looks, right? Everyone knows what I'm talking about. You get the yeah. like sympathetic, which is all coming Odd. from a good place. Yes. It yes. 100%. Everyone meant well. But it's just another, you, you know, you're wounded on the inside. And now I feel like I'm wounded on the outside because everybody's looking at me differently. Yep. And everyone feels bad. And that's... Those are all coming from good places, but it's it's just another reminder that my baby's not here anymore. And it was Correct. hard to, um, one, it's even hard to function mentally because, you know, returning back to work and trying to do your job well yes. um, when all you want to do is crawl into bed and cry. Right. Um, but then, you know, how are you doing? What can I do? And again, all coming from a good place. And I appreciated everything exactly. that everyone, you know, said to me. Um, but it was, and it wasn't them. It was me. I just needed more time to process. And I felt like we don't get that time to process. We don't. It's a huge problem. I mean, you know, you get 12 weeks of maternity leave when you have a baby, but then when you have a loss, you're expected to return to work and the mental anguish yeah. and emotional anguish. Once you're released by medical. Yes. yes yeah, right. Exactly. hundred percent. And yeah. it's hard and it's, um, it's just, I don't know. I just remember really, really struggling with that. Absolutely. And um, I think, you know, the best thing that happened to me when I did return to our physical office and walked in, um, you know, it was only a couple of days after we lost Brooke. I um, remember the one thing that really stuck out to me was someone pulled me into an office and it was great to see them. And, you know, I was, I was hysterical and crying and stuff like that. And they go, look, I'm always a safe space for you. Mm. Whenever you need to come in here and cry, cry. I love that. We can go in together. Um, this conference room is never really used. Let's just always come in here. Aww. Don't worry. Like, whatever you say, I get. And it was amazing. One, she was a, a baby loss survivor. But just understanding that she knew I just needed sometimes for someone to, like, tell me like we just talked about yeah you know that i am a safe space for you yeah. um that you can come and cry like i won't judge don't you feel guilty anything. about it right. don't feel guilty if you need to take a moment and go in and have a good cry because it happens and it happens at the oddest times Ugh, you don't random. expect it of course no. it's random of course it can't be planned right and my two hours of cry sesh that i got like from <laughs> seven to nine at night you right. know what i mean yeah like, yep. yeah it's definitely it, it's nice to have someone yes. say to you like here's a and i had that too i right. very understanding co-workers that you know if i needed to go take a walk or something and have a good cry they understood that right Right. And so I important. think it is. Yeah. Having those advocates behind you. Yeah, absolutely. You know? um, I think, too, like, I think it's also OK, well, at least it was for me, where I did allow myself to kind of wallow in it a little bit. Like yeah. I needed to really process it. Mm -hmm. And if I needed to take three, four a day, a couple days, like just to sit with that guilt and sit in that self-pity, that's OK. Because absolutely. we went through a horrific experience. Yeah. So why can't we, yeah. you know, and just let ourselves feel it out? When I think that's some of the, some of the societal expectations is you, yes. you bounce back and you keep going. Right. And that's... Um, you know, maybe some people can do can do right. that. I, I never could. Right. Um, I think, especially with the two stillbirths that we had, and even with the honestly the the secondary infertility, that's oh. such a long ongoing journey. Oh my that goodness. That is, it's you know, it's goodness oh. ups and down roller coaster, right? I like know. excitement and oh. you know sadness and the process. So. Even all the with losses, that. like all the, oh, yeah. like, and then seeing your period come yes. every month. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. That's, it was just like that's the like morning too. Like a reminder. Exactly. Yes. Well, and each time. And like, how can you even think about or do anything else when these things are happening? Yep. Yep. And I, and I think just, you know, I, I personally needed time to wallow, like you said. Yes. And I, um, and I think you need to allow yourself the grace to do that because yes. it's important. It's part of the grieving process. And um, if you want to sit in bed all day and eat yeah. Oreos or what, right, right. <laughs> whatever no, it seriously. is, your cookie of choice yes, and like ice cry. Cream just, uh, yeah, yeah, just totally an ice cream opportunity yeah. over here. Right. Yeah. And just do that. And I think it's important because you're processing and right. you 
yes, the laundry isn't getting done. Yes, the dishes aren't getting done. Everything's piling up. Everything's piling up, but it's Feels okay. Feels overwhelming, yes. but it's going to be okay. Don't feel guilty for doing that because it, those it, things can all wait. It needs to get happen. done eventually. It will. Yeah. And and it's what's the worst case? You've right. got to do it, and you got to take care of yourself. And if Absolutely. that means wallowing yes wallow right. away <laughs> right and like i don't know why it's ever looked as as strength for us to put on this pretty happy face yeah. when we're going out in public because to me that's not real that's mm -hmm. fake that's phony so and i can't be like and that. exhausting it's so exhausting one i don't have the energy at all i mean during I, all this to I, like I, even keep up with like it was really hard to shower for me yeah so like oh, yeah I mean, dry shampoo was my best friend during that time, yeah. like going into the office, like lucky I brushed my teeth kind of situation. Right. Throw a little uh, deodorant on and out I the mean, door you go. I lucky. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, I know. I feel I... bad for people that had to work close to me, <laughs> you know, during a couple months. But I mean, that goes back though too. you got to allow yourself like it. Yeah. It's a, it is. Struggles. Those struggles happen and it's okay. Yep. And it happens to the best of us to a lot of us and yep. it's just great that you know people are talking about it yep i agree it's so important and, and feeling like that's normal because it is normal i'm here to tell you it's completely normal so don't feel bad about it don't feel guilty about it um it's it's definitely something that uh, we all struggled with um and i think the more we say that it's okay i, I hope people feel that and and feel support surrounding that that it, you know, those dishes will wait. Absolutely. That laundry will wait. And, yeah. you know, give yourself the grace to, to mourn. Absolutely. And once I realized, too, like what was really important when I was first trying to get back out there, right, was doing my self-care. Yeah. Right? That was way more important than um, like, you know, returning to work and all those stressors and things like that. But for me, it was, OK, I need to do the basics to one, take care of myself, like almost put my oxygen mask on first. Yep. You know, in the infamous, you know plane that's, that's sure. crashing you know you got to put yours on before you put others and and it is that um I didn't do that I I sh I should have here we oh, go here I should have yeah that <laughs> should have the guilt <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I never did that I oh. still don't do that and I'm so bad about it and I I know I should right because it's right. very important absolutely I know 100%. that but I I didn't do it and I I kind of I still don't. And I, re I regret it because I think it would have helped me tremendously to Agreed. do self-care. Um, I never took the time to do it because I was a, uh, I'm a people pleaser, right? So like I put myself last and I know I should have done stuff to, um, to allow myself to grieve and to do, take those steps of self-care to help process everything. And I just I didn't I didn't do it right. right so what are some of the things you did because I I, I think because a lot of times I don't know what to do because I'm so right. busy right. that I don't take the time to do it but like what are some things that you did that helped you with self-care um, that, that kind of helped you through that process of grieving right I think for me it was really going back to like taking a bath and a shower mm -hmm. like because for a couple Basics. days I didn't and it was it wasn't because I was grieving so hard it was because I didn't want to wash Brooke off of me because she died in my arms oh, yeah. and so it was this whole mind thing right and she played with my hair so I didn't want to wash my hair I didn't want to do any of that and then I felt guilty for not wanting to shower or bathe during that time so during that you know my sisters helped sponge bathe me like once it got to be a day or two because you know I was still pumping like I need to start taking care of myself I yeah. get that but it's really hard in that time but anyways and um I don't need to tell all you that of course um but it goes back to that and then working up to goals of showering and doing all that and then going back out and getting my hair cut like mm. I canceled all of that I also um could not get out there and grocery shop so I started doing takeout for groceries mm, yeah and going to pick them up instead um and that's what you know we started doing but it was like small steps because then I was at least getting out there in society I was yeah. still doing it baby steps and then like walking getting out there um, fresh air yeah, yeah. it's so took important a while. so important so important and I started out with walking and then eventually got to that. And then I think also allowing myself to sit in bed and cry it out. That was really how I did it. Yeah. Um, and I, my husband allowed me, he would take care of the house. Like, you know, it was just great because we were grieving differently. Yeah. But he understood the space I needed. I understood his space and it made it not that we did it good or anything, but it made it more manageable. Yeah. No, I love that. And I, I think, I think um, that's a good reminder that when we talk about self care, you know, we may think of, going for a run, journaling, like yes. which all of which is important. Right. Yes. But I think in those early days after loss, self-care means taking a shower. Yes. The 
the basics the that are so important eating drinking <laughs> drinking water, water. yes yeah. and like just, the things yeah things that we don't look at normally as self care just into our routine every yes. day yes but but when you're lo- when you're going through a loss and you are struggling to well, even get out of bed up. those are self care things and you um, need to be reminded during those times right yes i mean i know it sounds simple like drink eight glasses of water a day okay yeah get it yeah but in that time you need those little simple general reminders like hey did you get a meal today can yeah. i take you or like hey i want to bring you over a meal because like and just doing for those people yep. right and, and i just... think that's that's a that's a great way to you know bless somebody who's going through a loss because you the last thing you want to think about is what am i going to have for dinner tonight absolutely and 100%. taking somebody but don't say hey what would you like for just yes. take them the meal you know because right. as long as you know like allergies and stuff like that yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Or, or give them like an uber eats card yes. or something like that but we make it easy for the them because yes. the, the the brain power that's needed to do those basic daily tasks Right. Is hard Honestly, to do. I wish we would have had a cleaning lady. Oh, yeah. I know. And I wasn't in the capability or in the mindset at that time to get one. Yeah. Because, like, but that would have been so helpful yes. during that time. And I was like, you know, but, you know, I didn't think about it or yeah. anything. So well, but then, did you, people. see, to me, I, I agree. That would have been great. But at the same time, oh, yeah, here right. we go. Yo, yo. Here's the thing. Here's our topic, right? Because they're cleaning in your I'm nose. telling you, guilt is like everywhere. <laughs> I I would feel guilty making somebody, paying money to make someone else clean my house when I feel like I should be able to just get out of bed and do it myself, right. you know? I know. And, and, and that's, oh, man, it's I so know. hard. It's like. It's no. You, you, ugh, I can't even. It's I know. so hard. Yeah. You want to uh, you wanna mourn. You you know, you're going through this ho- horrible experience. And, like, you know you should get out of bed and do stuff. But you just can't. No, you, you just can't. You physically can't. Can. can. And, honestly, I wish somebody would have just hired the cleaning lady so yes. I didn't have those feelings of yes. guilt. Because then it was like, oh, someone got us the gift of it. Oh, it's a it. gift. Yep. Oh, well, then oh, she's coming every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Perfect. Yes. Right. right. Okay. Let's Set up, ready to go. him or whoever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just like, who? Well, yeah, it, I just wish that had happened. I yeah. know. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about the, um, so, you know, I had mentioned earlier uh, that I had a lot of guilt surrounding. Yes. Let's dive into Landa and Emma. Yeah. Because that's what you said. And you still hold on to that guilt. I do. And this is something that we're trying to address with our Ask a Maternal Fetal Doctor. Yes. And anything. Question. Yes. Let's yes. So talk let's, about these things. Let's make notes about this because yes. I want to ask her, yes. um, you know, as a placeholder here. Right. Yep. We have we have these segments with our maternal fetal medicine doctor. And, you know, there's certain things that happened with Emma and Landon that I still struggle with. Um, should I have done this differently? Um, because right. You know, could they? Could it have been prevented? Absolutely. These losses? So, um, so just briefly with Landon, um, my oldest daughter, uh, she had contracted Fifth's disease, and it was misdiagnosed yeah. at the doctor. Um, and so we let it go on, and she wasn't getting better. Um, well, what ended up happening is, you know, I work in healthcare, so um, the Fifth's disease entered my body. I had no symptoms. Um, which they were surprised I even got it because I work in healthcare. I should have already been exposed and all these things. So, well, the the virus crossed the placenta, and for it to do that is pretty rare. And then, from what I'm told, and these are questions I would like to ask. Right. Um, and then it ended up crossing over, gave it to Landon, and which is also rare. And then for it to even kill him is like one in a million. Again, questions I would love to ask our maternal fetal medicine doctor right. because these these events took place, right? So then I started thinking, well, if she if our oldest wasn't misdiagnosed and we would have known, I should have asked questions like, could this be deadly? I'm pregnant. Could this be deadly to our baby? Because then I also found out that there was some trial or something going on nearby that they could have done stem cell stuff to help prevent um Landon from passing away if we would have known he contracted it right so like all these things so those are swirling in my head like should I have gotten a second opinion about our oldest daughter being sick should I you know and then should I have pushed for more answers should I have um when we found out should I have tried to do more to prevent Landon from getting you know like but looking back, you know, you can't, you don't know these things, right? You don't know what you don't know until it happens. And then you can always hindsight 2020, you look back and you start questioning stuff. But I, there's these questions that I have, like, should I have done something and more? Years later. Yes. Right? Still oh, I still struggle with, this, with it. Right? Well, so then, so that's with Landon. And then with um, Emma, our other still uh, born. So 
I get bronchitis every year, like really bad bronchitis. And I was pregnant with her. And I remember I, I had it so bad that year. I coughed so much, like hard, forceful coughing. Oh. And I just remember feeling her like yes. moving around a lot more. Now, I was told that baby's protected. It would not affect like the coughing doesn't affect anything. And I was like, OK, you know. I didn't take medicine because I was pregnant, you know, um, and she ended up passing away because the cord was wrapped around her neck three times. And I, I feel like I remember her moving a lot and I feel like I should have gotten medicine or I should have done something because even though I was told that it's not possible, I just Mm -hmm. have this horrible guilt and I have this like gut feeling, right? All mothers have these like instincts. I just know that I coughed so much and so hard for so long that she got jostled around and the cord ended up around her neck. Again, these are questions I would love to ask our maternal fetal medicine doctor because I normal. I mean, these are all things. How do you not question these things or your, or anything like around the loss, right? Because we just want answers. We want some peace with it. Yeah. And for me, it was better for me to know these answers than it was to live with them, yeah. the not knowing. So yeah. it depends on, you know, how you are as a person. Some are better not knowing. Yeah. I mean, Emma, here we are eight years later. Right. And, and Landon, um, it's been, goodness, like uh, 10 years or so. And right. I just, yeah, 10 years. I just, I don't know. I struggle with that guilt of I could have done something. Yeah. And um, maybe I couldn't have. Right. You know, I don't right. I don't know. It's it's not knowing. Right? Yes. It's, you know, should I have done this? Should I have done that? And, yeah. um, it, you know, I feel like we all kind of have those thoughts to a certain degree mm-hmm. when we lose a baby, you right. know, and, and um, you share that that stuff yeah. um, Absolutely. with the maternal fetal medicine doctor. And I just I I, I just have this guilt about it. Um, I've learned to let go of some of that and, you know, process right. it. But right. Um, it's, I feel like it's always going to be there. I'm always right. going to have those those yeah. questions and, and, and should I have done more and the, those guilty great, feelings. Right, that you can go to a community, though, or go to a person, yeah. right, and get yeah. some answers or to be able to talk about it yeah. and just understand that it's okay yeah. to not be okay yeah. with how things went or sure. the process or acceptance and yep. things like that. Um, because we don't, like, we, like, I accepted that we lost Brooke and that she died, right? Yeah. And I'm just referring to Brooke. But I'm never going to accept that she died before me yeah. or that she didn't live a life. Like, I'm yeah. not going to accept that, right? And, mm-hmm. like, that is so hard for for me, I think. Yeah. yeah. Right? I, and I think I'm always going to question it. Why did this happen? Yeah. And I feel like that's that's something we all Absolutely. struggle with. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks so much, Bree, for being here. Of and course. Thank and you. Up. Yes. And, um, yeah, so stay tuned uh, for our next episode weekly. And um, hang in there, survivors. We're here with you along every step of the way in your journey.